We're back. We're assessing the as-a-service space, HPE's GreenLake announcements. My name is Dave Vellante. You're watching theCUBE. Dion Hinchcliffe is here, along with Holger Muller. These are the Constellation Kids, extraordinary <laughs> analysts, guys. Great to see you again. Great I mean, it. You're super experienced. You guys, you deal with practitioners, you deal, you're deal, technologists, you've been following this business for a long time. Dion, we, we spoke to, to Holger earlier. I want to start with you. Uh, when you look at this whole trend, to as a service. You see a lot of traditional enterprise companies, hard, traditionally hardware companies making that move for, for a lot of obvious reasons. Are they sort of replicating in your view a market that you know well in, in SaaS? What's your take on, on how they're doing generally, that trend, and how HPE is operating? Well, HPE has had a you know, unique heritage. They're coming at the whole cloud story and you know, the hyperscaler story from a, from a different angle than, than a lot of their competitors. And that's mostly a good thing because most of the world is not yet on the cloud. They, you know, it actually came from HPE's original world, you know, their, their line of servers and networks and so on. Um, and, and so they bring a lot of credibility saying, we really understand the world you live in now, but we want to take you to that, that as a service future. Uh, and, and you know, since we understand you so well and we also understand where this is going and we can adapt that to that world, we have a very compelling story. And I think that you know, with GreenLake, we, you know, when it, was, it first started you know, about four years ago, it was off to the side uh, uh, you know, with all their other offerings. Now it's, it's really grown up, it's matured a lot. And I think you know, as we talk about the announcements, we'll see that a lot of key pieces have fallen into place to make it a very compelling hybrid cloud option for the enterprise. Well, let's talk about the announcements. Was there anything in particular that, that stood out? I mean, the move to data management, I think is pretty interesting as a TAM expansion strategy. What, what's your take on the announcement? Well, the, um, you know, the unified analytics uh, story, I think, is really important. Now, that's the technology piece, where they say, they say we can give you a data fabric, uh, you can access your data outside of its silos. It doesn't address a lot of the, the process and cultural issues around data ownership inside the enterprise, uh, but it's you know, having it in, in the actual platform, and actually articulating it as a platform, that's one of the things that was also evident, they were getting better and better at saying, this is a hybrid cloud platform, and it has all the pieces that you would expect, especially the, you know, things like being able to bring your data from wherever it is to wherever people need it to be. Uh, and you know, that's the holy grail. So really glad to see that component in particular. Uh, I also like the cloud adoption framework saying, we understand how to take you from this parochial world of servers that you have and do a cloud native hybrid world and then maybe eventually get you, get you to a public cloud. We understand all the steps and all the components. Uh, I think that's, uh, you know, I haven't studied it fully in depth, but it seems to have all the moving parts. Hold, chime in, yeah. anything stand out to you? No, I think uh, it's great announcements and the most important thing is HPE is in transformation. And when you're in transformation, people realize who you've been the old, and they hear maybe the mess of the new, but an experienced technology buyer will not right away say, oh, it's going to happen, right? It's going to happen like this, it's going to be done, it's ready, it's mature, it's ready to use, and so on. So this is going to give more data points, more proof points, more capabilities, that HP is moving away from whatever they were before, <laughs> let's not even say that, to a software services, as a service, as you mentioned, provider. It's been challenging, you look at the course of history, for companies that try to go from being a hardware company to a software company. Uh, HP itself, what? you know, sort of gave up on that. Uh, you know, IBM, you could say, you know, semi succeeded, but they've they've struggled. What's different? They just had to spend thirty billion. Right? <laughs> yeah, a year. Thirty-four. <laughs> right. Exactly. 34, right? Yeah. And, so, <laughs> and so, and of course, Cisco is making that transition. I mean, every yeah. you know large company is in that transition. What about today? Well, first of all, what do you think about HPE's prospects of doing so? And are there things today in the business that that make that you know more facile? Whether it's you know, containers or the cloud itself or just the scale of the internet. I mean, it's a fascinating topic, right? And I think many of the traditional players in the IT space failed because they wanted to mimic the cloud players and they simply couldn't muster up the capex which you need to build out public cloud, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you think of the public cloud players, then didn't put it up for the op cloud offering, they put it up because they need it themselves, right? Amazon is an online retailer, Google is a search and advertising giant, Microsoft has organic load from, from, from Office which they had to bring to the cloud, so it was easier for them to do that. So no wonder they failed. The good news is they haven't lost much of their organic load. HPE customers are still HPE customers, servers still have to be procured in their own premises. And now they're bringing the qualities of the cloud, the as a service, the pay as you go capabilities to their on-premise stack, which helps an IT leader to reduce complexity and go to what everybody in the post-pandemic world wants to get to, which is I only pay for what I use. 
And that's super crucial because business goes up and down. We're riding all the waves in a much, much faster way than ever before, right? Before we had seven year cycles. <laughs> it was kind of like cozy almost. Now we're down to seven weeks, sometimes seven days, sometimes seven hour cycles. And I don't want to pay for IT infrastructure, which was great for how my business was two years ago. I want to pay for it as I use it now, as I pivot now, and I'm going to use it now. Diane, how much of this, uh, thank you for that, Holger. How much of this is what customers want and need versus sort of survival tactics on the vendor's part? <laughs> well, so I, I think that they, if you look at where customers want to go, they know they have to go cloud, they have to go as a service, um, and that they need to make multiple steps to get there. And for the most part, I see GreenLake as being a, a highly credible market response to say, you know, we understand IT better, we've helped build you guys up over the last 30 years, we can take you the rest of the way, here's all the evidence and the proof points, which I think a lot of the announcements provide. Uh, and they're very good on cloud native, but the area where the story um, you know, may not be the fullest strength it needs to be is around things like multi-cloud. So when I talk to almost any large organization CIO, they have all the clouds, they need to know how do I make all this fit together, uh, how do I reconcile that? So for the most part, I think it's closely aligned with actual customer requirements and customer needs. Uh, I think these have additional steps to go. Is that a, do you feel like that's a, a priority, in other words, they got to kind of take a linear path, they got to solve the problem for their core customer base, uh, or, or is it, do you feel like that's not even a necessarily an aspiration? I mean, it seems like customers want them to go there is what I'm inferring that you're oh, saying. Oh, I do, well, let's go back to the announcements specifically. Uh, so there's, there are two great uh, um, uh, operational uh, announcements, one around uh, the uh, cloud physics and the other one around uh, InfoSight. It gives a wealth of data, uh, you know, full stack about how things are operating, where the needs are, how you might be able to get more efficiencies, how you can shut down silicon you're not using. A lot of really great information, but all that has to live with a whole bunch of other consoles. And everybody is really craving this single piece of glass. That's what they want, is they want to reduce complexity, as Holger was saying, and say, I want to be able to get my arms around my data center and, and all of my cloud assets, but I don't want to have to be check each cloud. I want it in one place. So, uh, but it's great to see those announcements position them for that next step. They have these essential components that, are, that, that look, you know, uh, they look best to breed in terms of their capabilities. They're certainly very modern. Now they have to get to the rest of that story. Holger, you were mentioning uh, CapEx. I, mean, I, I added it up, I think last year, the big four, if you include Alibaba, spent 100 billion on yeah. CapEx. And you know, generally, the traditional on-prem players have, have been defensive uh, around cloud. You know, mm -hmm. Not everything's moving to the cloud, we all know that. But I. I see that as a gift, in a way, that, that the, the companies like HPE can build mm -hmm. uh, on top of, and to Dion's point, that you know, extend cross clouds out to the edge, which is you know, yeah. this trillion dollar opportunity, which is just, just massive. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on HPE's opportunities there and, and chances of maybe breaking away from the pack? Yeah, I think definitely, well, there's not much of a pack left, right? <laughs> there's only two, three. <laughs> it's, it's a triumvirate, if you yeah, want to say. Maybe that's a good thing, from a margin standpoint. Duopoly, for margins, etc. There's not a long list of people yeah. who give me hardware in my data center. Right. Right? Um, but I, I think it increases their chances, right? Like I said, it's a transformation. There's more credibility, there's more data point, there's more usage. I can put more workloads on this, and I, CIOs are, will pay attention to that and look at that for the transformation, no question. Yeah, and speaking of CIOs, what are you hearing these days? Uh, what's their reaction to this whole trend toward as a service? Do they, do they welcome it? Do they feel like, okay, it's a wait and see? Uh, I need more proof points. What, what's the sentiment? Well, you have to divide the, the CIO market into basically two large groups. Uh, one is the, the, the ones that are highly mature. Uh, they tend to be in larger organizations. They're very sophisticated consumers of everything. They see the writing on the wall, and that for most things, certainly not everything as a service makes the most sense for all the reasons we know, agility and, and, and speed, you know, time to value, uh, scalability, elasticity, all those great things. Uh, and then you have the, the other side of the market where they really crave control, they, they have uh, highly parochial worlds that they've built up um, that uh, are hard to move to the cloud because they're so complex and inter intertwined because they haven't had that high maturity, they have a lot of spaghetti architecture. They're not really ready to move the cloud very quickly. So um, the, uh, the second audience though is the largest one. And it's, um, you know, the hyperscalers are probably getting a lot of the, the, the first ones. Um, but the bigger market's really the second one where the folks that need a lot of help and they have a lot of legacy hard, uh, uh, hardware and software that they need to move and that HPE uh, understands very well. And mm -hmm. so I think from that standpoint, they're well positioned to take advantage of an untapped market, a relatively untapped market in comparison. Hey, in our business, we all get pulled in different directions because <laughs> we, we got to eat. Uh, but w what are some of the cool things you guys are working on in your research that you might want people to know about? 
Uh, oh, look, I, I just did a market overview for enterprise application platforms. Mm -hmm. I'm a strong believer that you should not build all your enterprise software yourself, but you can't use everything that you get from your typical SaaS provider. So it's focusing on the extent, integration, and build capabilities. Build is very, very important to create the differentiation in the marketplace, and it's all the known SaaS players basically for their past, right? My funny example is always in the two to speak in cartoons, right? The peanuts, right? There's Linus with his comfort blanket. Right, the past capability of the SaaS player is the comfort blanket, right? If you don't fit 100% there, or you want to build something strategic, or we'll never get to that micro vertical, we have a great enterprise application platform. Interesting topic, especially when you see what's happening with Salesforce and yes. ServiceNow, trying to be the platform of platforms. Yep. I have to check that out. How about Diane? What well, and uh, last year I uh, had a survey, I conducted a survey with the uh, top 100 CIOs, in, at least in my view about what they're going to do to get through this year. And so I'm redoing that uh, again uh, to say, you know, what are they going to do in 2022? Because there's so many changes in the world. And so, uh, you know, last year, digital transformation, automation, uh, cybersecurity were at the top of the list. Uh, and it's going to be very interesting. Cloud was there too, you know, in the, in the top five. Uh, and so we're going to see what it, how it's all going to change because next year is the year of hybrid work where we're all going to have to figure out how half our, our businesses uh, are in the office and half are at home and how we're going to connect those uh, together and what tools we're going to ma make that happen. Everybody's trying to figure out how to get hybrid right, so definitely yes. want to check out that research. Guys, thanks so much for coming to theCUBE. It's great to see you. Mm, thanks for having thanks, me. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome. Okay, and thank you for watching, everybody. Keep it right there for more great content from HPE's GreenLake announcement. You're watching theCUBE.